Hello and welcome, this is Vendetta and today we're going to be looking at a battle replay. So, I haven't really been doing much Shogun um, in the past few months actually, mainly because um, I thought the game was dead, but it isn't. So, um, the reason I thought it was dead is because I think I had a couple of mods installed and uh, I don't know, my internet connection may have been out at the time and it said there were no players. So, um, really unfortunate circumstances, I thought, oh, sad, Shogun 2 has died but far from it. Shogun 2 is still alive and kicking. Whenever I go online, I'm getting different players every single time. And actually, I'm getting players very, very quickly as well. Um, so I think I'm actually getting players quicker than I was when um, before Rome 2 came out, which is a bit weird. Anyway, so today I've got a special battle for you. I have got traditional versus modern. I haven't done one of these in a while, so we will try and get with it. So I'm going to be playing against um, Albert V. 808. It's got me Mr. Vendetta TWN and um, let's go through my army. So playing as traditional on Kansai Wood I thought this is going to be a very tricky map to play because he's got so much room to manoeuvre and he's got so much room to uh, spread his army out. But let's go over my army and his army first. So I've got um, you know standard Naginata attendants up front. I've got one Naginata attendant up front. Um, mainly I wanted to charge my army forward and um, this one to take the brunt of it. And then these two will then take the rest of it. If you run up two like this, they'll get annihilated, and then it, you know, you straight into your um, normal heavy infantry. Didn't want that. I wanted to annihilate this one first, and then go through those two. Um, we've then got some Yari Samurai, Yari Samurai, and Yari Samurai, mainly because I want to defend against any um, any cavalry engagement. You know, that may be charging into me, which is. One of the reasons why I've mainly moved from sword-based armies to spear-based armies, because I don't want them charging in their cavalry into swords, you know, and I'm vulnerable. Um, this way, if I've got like an all-spear uh, uh, all army, it's fine, you know, I won't get dicked over kind of a thing. So we then got some bow warrior monks, so I decided to bring some 200 range, because, again, we're on such a large map, I didn't know what he was going to be bringing, so I thought that'd be a safe bet to go for. We've then got some bulletproof samurai, Yari Samurai and some more Yari Samurai. So I've got about five Yari Samurai, surprisingly. Um, and they've all got really, really heavy stats. Bulletproof, of course. Um, and then a cavalry, we've got um, obviously my general who is a leadership gen. We've got light cav, light cav, light cav. So three of those guys. We've then got um, a Yari cav and a fire cav. I've then also got another light cav over here with Naganata attendant. And then I've got two ninjas. Aha, oh, yes. I was in Skype with Harrison at the time and I said to him, should I bring ninjas? And he's like, yeah, go for it. So I thought, fuck it, why not? We'll bring some ninjas. So I've got two of those guys and uh, let's go over to his army. He's, he actually decided to bring Gatling guns, which is pretty interesting. I've In all my years of playing Shogun 2, I've never played against somebody online using Gatling guns. I actually got to the point where I was thinking, are they even available for online play? Um, but this game, evidently, they are. So he's got Black Bear Infantry, Black Bear, Black Bear, United States Marine, Black Bear, Black Bear. So he's got about five or six Black Bear. He's then got United States Marine. He's got uh, Shogatai, Shogatai, Kyoto Police, Kyoto Police. Um, so he's gone for a bit of a mixed build in a way. I probably would have taken out these Gatling guns because they're not really going to be too useful. Although um, you'll see a pretty cool charge later on. Um, but yeah, he's... He's definitely realised I'm traditional, so he's going for some uh, Shogatai units. And he has got these Kyoto Police, which actually, actually isn't too bad of an idea. Although, I, if you are going to go for any Spear Defence, I would generally go um, Spear Levy. However, I would never spend money on um, melee units on Fall of the Samurai. I would just try and spam as much line infantry as I can. Um, the more guns you bring to a Fall of the Samurai game, the better you're going to do. I generally think that's how it kind of goes um obviously quality does come into it so you know you can't just spam loads of shit um you know line infantry but you can you know bring bear infantry you know if you spam a lot of those generally you can cover the whole map and um get really really good arcs of fire and you can win a game pretty easily um but anyway let's go over to the actual gameplay we're going to be fighting over the defense shrine and the sword dojo now i thought he would be going for the defense shrine as i'm pretty sure he will not be attacking me so of course this is going to be the best one for him to upgrade his units with and that is indeed what he is going to use and that's actually the side he decided to put his gatling guns on now artillery is very very important wherever you put it um he does put it at a bit of an angle facing uphill which again is bad i mean if he got his gatling guns on the side here, that would have been perfect. You know, about here. 
because he's got the whole range. He's got the defense shrine. He's got, you know, you can shoot kind of across this ridge here. You can shoot all the way around up until probably that tree line there, um, which would be fantastic. I mean, I've got 250 range, which isn't actually that long. I thought it was a lot longer than that. Um, in fact, no, I have actually played a match with Gatling Guns, I just remembered. But anyway, let's get a crack on with the game. So, um, what I'm going to do is send up my Naganator attendants to go capture this Sword Dojo. Got my Light Cab on the flank, so I really would want to disturb him. Um, I really want to dissuade this Revolver Cab from coming near me. That is the main reason I bought this Light Cab over here, because I thought if I have my Light Cab, um, then any Gun Cab you may have is not going to work against those Naganator attendants, because he's not going to want to, you know, be at the mercy of these light cav because they're obviously going to be able to chase them down um i then pull over my fire cav over here my general because i do realize he's starting to stack on this side and i want to make sure i get this sword dojo if i let him swing round on me that is a bad thing that is a very bad thing if you're a uh, traditional because there are kind of two ways you can play in traditional you can either go for an all-out bum rush where you're using ninjas or stealthy units or whatever um to initiate and then you just steamroll with your army that's the usual way that i will play a match or you can do kiting, which is extremely difficult, but you can do it pretty effectively. In fact, I'd say it's easier to kite a traditional army than it is to kite... A tr no, easier to kite a modern army than it is traditional. Go the other way around there. Um, this is purely because um, Fall of the Samurai don't have many 200 range units, as I remember. I'm pretty sure 150 is generally the range at which they go to, you know, minus the general, which I think does actually go... Um, a bit further than that. I can't remember whether um, the general goes further than 155, but um, you know, I mean, <laughs> I love that 155 with a revolver, nice. But um, yeah, they, you can kite them pretty easily with like bow uh, warrior monks, and I have had that done to me before. Unfortunately, I deleted the um, the replay to that, and, but that game was like two years ago, unfortunately. But if I had that, I would have definitely showed it because it was fantastic. Um, the guy was just kiting me massive, and I was playing modern, he was traditional, so um, shame we didn't get to keep that, but it would have been great to view. So I'm going to pull my cavalry around the flank, because I do not want him to um, just be in one straight line. It's important, if you're ever a traditional player, you do not want um, you know their arcs of fire covering very well. The arc of fire is basically, if you've got a gun unit, they've got that, you know, the red arc of fire, you know, the kind of range at which they can shoot. Um, you don't want them overlapping, that way you can take out individual units. So, for example, this unit is completely isolated. You know, that has got nothing covering his flanks apart from this revolver cab, which isn't really going to do much. So, if I went for a full-out cav charge, I could easily just wipe out this flank, you know, with no real difficulty. No, but the fact that I'm getting just light cav around the back, you know, he's having to fold his flanks up, he's having to take units off the front line, I could just flat out charge him right now if I wanted. Um, but he's actually going to make a move for the workshop. Now the reason I kept my for my units in the forest is because I didn't want them being shot by the Gatling guns. Um, I was planning on kiting him a bit more and then um, obviously he would then charge forward and I would then bum rush him. That was the general idea. <coughs> However, I have actually managed to pull off a pretty good move. I've got my ninjas up here. I pulled down my Yari Cav to bait him in a bit, and he has taken the bait beautifully. The spears go down, the Cav go up, and the ninjas are about to rape hard. So the ninjas then run in, all of a sudden they've been discovered, and you should see um, multiple Kyoto police heads rolling down the hill. Um, you know, a few of my ninjas are dying. You know, I think they do lose six on the charge, which they do. However, you can see the kills just absolutely racking up hard. Over on this flank, he did manage to get a few kills off of my light Cav with that... Um, General's bodyguard, I think it was. He's now going to be charging his Kyoto police into my light cav. Um, he carries on charging, so obviously my general being a melee general, he hasn't got a uh, penalty against Spears. So, goodbye Mr. Kyoto police on that side. Goodbye Mr. Kyoto police on that side. And he is now without any spear support. Now he's going to be pulling over his um, rover cav, so I start taking some nice pot shots at it with my bow. Warrior Monk, and um, I do manage to take two of them out. I think that's pretty much it. Um, I then charge into my Yari Cav down the hill to try and push these guys away. I'm not going to chase, of course, because otherwise I would be chasing into Black Bear Line Infantry Fire, which I do not want, of course. Now I'm going to be pulling back my Light Cav because, of course, these guys did get shot, as I mentioned, by his general. Um, I'm going to be pulling these guys back, and I really want to hit this Black Bear in the back. 
because that'll do that'll cause so much disruption. Um, that means I can then charge these two cav units forward in a light cav and my general, and I've also got my fire cav hiding in the corner here. So I can pretty much mop up this whole entire flank just from this charge here. Unfortunately, I don't quite get it off as I wanted. I did a move order and then I did the. There you go. I did the move order and then I did the attack, which was bad, and they're just gonna like, beat the crap out of that. However, I am now going to charge with all of my cav, and I do swing my cavalry round, you know, in an arc rather than charging straight forward. This unit, I'm just gonna charge straight at this black bear over here. Um, this light cav, I don't even know what it's doing. It should be coming back in a second. Um, I put this light cavalry over here on this flank. Now my army's still just kind of sitting there. He's going to push up his Shogatai, which is a very, very bad move. You'd never want to be engaging a traditional army within Forest if you're playing as modern. It's a bad idea. Never do it. Um, especially just with two units against, you know, like five um, Yari Sam bulletproof um, and basically everything. In the known universe hiding in the forest, you, do, you don't really want to fight it with two Shogatai units and a United States Marine. So I pretty much just swipe through this whole flank and um, I've killed his general at this point as well there we go his general has now fallen and I'm gonna carry on charging straight through to this United States Marine um, and pretty much he's just got this little box in the corner um, the light cab is now gonna charge into the revolver cab it's gonna mess up this revolver cab revolver cab is great as long as you can pick off vulnerable units so for example as I've said earlier my um, Naginata attendant would have been a key target, you know, of those revolver cav because my revolver cav would not have been able to, um, well, his revolver cav would have just, you know, come in, shot them, dismounted, and got the sword dojo. But obviously, it's not going to happen um, if I've already got cavalry there as I did. Um, the Gatling guns did shoot, and they managed to take out a few of my horses. They, uh, my general actually charged into it all, but um, you know, he is still alive, and I charged those two cavalry units down the hill. Wiping out these Black Bear Infantry, and now the Shogatai, he did send one in, and I completely mopped it up without an issue. I ninja bombed them as well, um, you know, just thought I'd go over the top a little bit. And now he's going to charge his Shogatai from these in. But again, you know, I haven't even used my army really, and um, so I'm just going to charge them all in one giant blob because I basically can. And um, here's the unit start to break, and that's how you take apart a modern army with traditional. And he does drop from the game, I believe. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it. Um, you kind of have to break their army apart. If a modern army is fully stacked with line infantry and has got you know some good cavalry backing it, it's going to be very, very hard, especially if they don't break up those arcs of fire. Then you're going to have a very, very difficult time trying to break it apart and then beat it. Because unless you've got you know loads of meat shields and you've got some good infantry to back them up with some cavalry to chase any revolver cav or carbine cav you're basically screwed you have to break up a modern army hardcore um, the best way to initiate I would say um, an engagement with a modern army is to just straight up um, charge with ninja take several of the guys out because um, otherwise if you use meat shields what can happen is that you actually end up wasting units so if you let's say have three Yari Ashigaru as their meat shields what happens is that those um, meat shields will probably get absolutely churned up before your army, you know, before they've even reached the enemy and gotten some kills. Whereas with ninjas, you can, you know, spend, you know, the same amount about two ninjas and just go straight in, get a few kills. Yeah, a lot of them will die and they probably will all die. But the main thing is, is that it stops the enemy from shooting at your units before they get into combat, and also you get loads of kills with those ninjas anyway. So. Um, yeah, it was a cool battle to show, just thought I'd do that. I've been playing a lot of Shogun recently, so, um, you know, as soon as I found out the game wasn't dead, I've been playing a lot more of it, and I've got loads of battles to show you. So, um, hope you guys have enjoyed. The game is frozen, so I can't show you the, um, results screen, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed, and bye-bye for now.